Today I thought I'd look at internal resistance of battery cells and in particular uh, some of these salvaged 18650s that I have here in the shed. Well what do we mean by internal resistance? Well if we take a battery here well we can assume in series with the battery there is some resistance. So uh, actually the battery cell encompasses both these elements because well no battery is perfect but how can we measure this resistance when it's inside a battery cell well i'm going to put this cell under load with another resistor and that gives me a potential divider here between these two resistors and hopefully I'll be able to calculate the resistance internally of this cell. So firstly let's take the open circuit voltage of this cell here and this cell is all but fully charged 4.193 volts. Let's just uh, note that down. So the voltage open circuit equals 4.194 was it 4.193 i suppose it'll make a vast amount of difference 4.193 volts i've built up this little test rig here it's a dual holder but i'm only using one side and as you can see i have a power resistor a 10 watt 5 ohm resistor and that is connected across the well what will be the positive and negative of the cell once i plug that in so uh, we have a known resistor here 5 ohms but let's just check that first by attaching my leads to each side of this resistor and uh, just turning that to resistance and well the vicky is saying yes exactly five ohms so uh we'll take the five ohm uh, resistance value and uh, we'll note that down as well now of course we can work out the current that's going to flow in this circuit i equals v over r so what are we talking there i equals uh 4.193 divided by 5. 0.193 divided by 5 equals, well, 838 milliamps. But how do we find the voltage drop across this internal resistor? Well, Kirchhoff's law applies. And basically, that law says that the voltage drop across both resistors must add up to the voltage of the perfect voltage source, or the open source voltage of our cell. So now we need to take another measurement, the voltage drop across this resistor here, the load resistor. So without further ado, let's put the cell into the cell holder and give it a moment to settle down so the voltage under load equals 4.085 or 083 083 volts okay so the voltage open circuit must equal the uh, voltage across the load plus the voltage across the internal resistor so 4.193 volts equals 4.083 volts plus VI. VI must equal 4.193 minus 4.083.11 volts. So the voltage drop across the internal resistor is 0.11 volts now we can just apply ohm's law again so the voltage across that internal resistor equals the current times the voltage of the internal resistor v equals i r so r i equals v i over i lots of i's here isn't there 
So Ri equals 0.11 volts divided by 0.8386 amps. And that gives me the grand total that this cell has an internal resistance of 131 milliohms. Now here's the risky bit because I probably should run this test a few times and take some sort of average but uh, I haven't and I'm not going to uh, but I'm going to pit my calculations here against this commercial um, option the IST DT Smart Charger C4 um, and I'm going to do it under the same conditions I'm going to set a discharge going at around 800 milliamps that's what we had before wasn't it so let's give that a go this uh, charger discharger should display an internal resistance there and oh 115 114 milliohms dropping slightly so that's not a million miles away is it i don't think that's too far away from my calculation and perhaps if i had run this a couple of times i'd be getting somewhere closer to this 110 115 milliohms and of course that's an important point that the internal resistance will change in different temperatures uh, different state of charges so different voltages uh, that can change quite dramatically so uh, if you are trying to get an idea of the uh, internal resistance of all your cells well you need to do it at the same temperature the same state of charge that sort of thing but actually i'm pretty pleased with that i won calculation 131 milliohms and this is yeah about 115 milliohms uh, the istd is calculating so yeah quite pleased with that when I was looking into making this video, it became apparent that a lot of people don't like this method and prefer an alternative. But actually, the alternative method seems to be much the same. We still have the uh, cell here and that internal resistor to the cell that obviously we're attempting to measure. And there's also an external resistor of a known value as well that we can connect to this cell but this method also requires a couple of capacitors one there and one there and the cell is actually connected across across an AC source oops a C. So I've made this little test rig here. Um, I've got a 5 ohm resistor again. Um, actually, this doesn't need to be anything like a 10 watt resistor because there shouldn't be any current really flowing through this uh, circuit. But, uh, well, I've used the same as last time. Uh, a couple of uh, ceramic capacitors here, 220 picofarads, I think. And uh, they're uh, connected there at the center point on the positive cell terminal here. So uh, they are there. And this is my V2 measuring point here. And of course, there's the uh, ground of the cell here. And I just need to find now uh, an AC voltage source. Now, I'm going to use this function generator to create an AC signal here, which I should be able to measure. That is powered by this split rail uh, power supply here because it needs positive 12 volts, negative 12 volts, and in fact, it needs 5 volts as well. And this power supply can supply all of that at the same time. Uh, now, you'll remember, if you're a long-term viewer, that I had a few issues uh, building this function generator, but this is the working one. Um, so let's get it wired up. Right, with a function generator connected, let's plug in some power to the power supply and i'm just using a usb power bank here to uh, power up this split voltage uh, power supply it's already set to a sine wave of 100 hertz that will do me for now let's turn it on and uh, measure the voltage uh, between 
the two test leads. Right, so I think I've got just about everything here in shot, almost. Um, right, I've got my DVM here set to AC voltage. Its probes are connected across here, uh, the resistor here and the ground point here. So uh, between those two points there, so exactly where I need to measure the uh, AC voltage. So let's turn on the function generator, turn on. There we go. Uh, 100 hertz apparently on, and it sat at 6.97 volts. So my V1 equals 6.97 volts. Now what I need to do is put my cell inside the cell holder. I guess I'll check that that voltage hasn't changed. Yes, 6.97 volts. And now I need to probe this point here, V2, at the other side of that uh, capacitor. And it says 0 0.072. V2 equals 0 0.07. Slightly, I'll go 0 0.073. There we go. Right, so I have my two voltage measurements. Now I've cleared away some bits and pieces that I don't need right at this minute. But of course the last thing I need to do is uh, check the value of this claimed 5 ohm resistor. And what does the uh, Vicky say? 5.1? No, I think we can go with... 5 ohms. It's floating a bit, but yeah, 5 ohms. So R1 equals 5 ohms. Perfect. Okay, so now we need to use some potential divider mathematics to work out R2, our internal resistance. Well, first of all, V2 equals V1 times... And then it's R2 over R1 plus R2. And we can rework that to R2 equals V2 times R1 over V1 minus V2. So R2 equals V2, which is 0 0.073, times R1, which was 5 ohms, divided by V1 6.97 minus V2 0 0.073. So 6.97 minus 0.073 equals 6.897. We'll add that to the memory. 5 divided by memory recall equals 0.724 times 0.073, the value of V2, equals... Hmm, interesting. So R2 in this experiment gives me 0 0.052 ohms or 52 milliohms. Now to check my maths this time, I've had to go out and buy an internal resistance meter that uses the AC method here. And this one claims that it does. Uh, and who am I to disbelieve those claims. It comes with a set of probes here, which are double probes, which also retract, I guess, to get the same pressure connection each time. They're actually pretty sharp. Um, that connects into the, uh, the top here. The four wires all connect in there. And uh, this needs a battery. Let me put one in. Right, so I think I've got everything in place just about to do the test. Let's press 
and depress those prongs into the cell and do the same on this side and that's reading quite a bit higher than my measurement down there which was what 52 milliohms this is well it's double isn't it 106 milliohms it seems to be settling at 105 106 milliohms it is also reading the voltage there of the cell um at 4.09 volts 105 milliohms so that's quite a long way away isn't it from my calculated value how can we explain that one well my measurement of resistor one may not have been perfect and equally reading small ac voltages i don't know how accurate my multimeter is at doing that but equally i don't know how accurate this machine is either right then well i've tested this cell using four different methods two which i made myself and two commercial options and at least three of them well they're pretty close aren't they sadly it was one of the shed built solutions uh, which failed me on this occasion but i've always said when you're testing hundreds and hundreds of cells well to be honest it's a benchmarking system isn't it whatever piece of equipment you use to uh, test the capacity or the internal resistance well you need to stick with the same piece of equipment you're benchmarking your cells against well your cells nobody else's so if you have a cell uh, with a high internal resistance according to your experiments well that's probably one you don't want to include in your pack but remember to test them at the same voltage and try and test them at the same temperature anyway hopefully you've enjoyed this video if you did give me a thumbs up subscribe down below comment if you can and i will see you next time Thanks for watching.